Well, Russ Bowen joins us now. And Russ, earlier this week, you reported on why the Biden campaign chose North Carolina as the first stop at the, after the debate. Yeah, Russ, based on what you were able to see last night, do you think they were hoping that they accomplish what they hope to accomplish? I think today there are a lot more questions about that than there were yesterday and mm-hmm. the day before and the day before and the months before. Look, remember, North Carolina is considered one of seven swing states, right? So there's a strategic reason that they chose to come to North Carolina Mm -hmm. in the first place. There's a reason they chose to come to Raleigh. They really do believe they can flip this state. And there's a reason for that. There's a trend for that. I'm going to show you this first graphic to give you sort of an idea of exactly what we're talking about, if we could bring that up. All right. So this was the 2016 election with Trump and Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton by 3.66 percent in the state of North Carolina. That's pretty significant. But let's go four years later to 2020. President Trump beat uh, Biden in North Carolina in the election that, of course, Biden ended up winning nationally by just 1.34 percent. It was the closest race in the entire country when it comes to, you know, the, the difference between Trump winning a state and Biden coming in second place. So they really do think for various reasons, including demographics, who's moved in the state and all of that as to why they can potentially flip this state, narrow that gap, right? But it's now a little different. There's gonna be a lot more scrutiny today after yesterday. People are gonna be watching in a way they weren't going to be doing so yesterday. How does he look when he walks in? How does he look when he gets on the stage? What does his voice sound like? Um, How does he interact with reporters? If he's standing around taking pictures with people, how does he react? How does he look? I talked to political scientists, uh, David McLennan at Meredith College about this very issue just a few minutes ago. You know, not only is he gonna go forward with his message that he prepared for today, you know, talking about his accomplishments, the importance of voting for him, but he's got to address the elephant in the room, which is his debate performance. And that's what a lot of people are going to watch is how he reacts to those kinds of questions. I mean, will he react defensively? Will he try to ignore it and move on? So I I think you're right. This event has taken on added scrutiny, and I think it'll not only get scrutiny from North Carolinians, but people all around the country, because this is the first event. So historically, how does last night rank compared to debates in past elections? So, you know, most political experts will say all in all, especially when races are this close and people are this dug in, they don't matter that much, Mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. I mean, we like to watch them, especially as media, we like to pull things. And certainly you'll get some headlines with some zingers or one liners that we'll talk about throughout the rest of the election. And typically they're far closer to the actual November election than this one, which is the earliest debate we've ever had Mm -hmm. this far out from the election. But David McLennan agrees with a lot of pundits today as well. Um, this may change the history books uh, in terms of the importance of just what we saw last night. Yeah, we will, of course, see how it all plays yeah, out. Absolutely. Russ, thanks so much. You bet.